I am only too well aware of the tremendous contribution that the armed forces have made to the standing and reputation of this country throughout the world during my reign. He's wearing the order, the garter, and looks both regal and military and elegant all at once. When Prince Philip and I were married, Britain had just endured six years of war, emerging battered but victorious. Prince Philip had served in the Royal Navy in the Far East while I was in the ATS learning to drive an ambulance with care. I know I speak for all those who have the privilege to wear your uniform and hold your commission when I thank you for your dedication to our service and to our country. It is a tradition of very long standing. The sovereign and members of the royal family are intimately associated with the armed forces and have been proud to serve in all three services. The Queen's duty and her service has been a guiding example of just what a good monarch can be. As the daughter, wife and mother of naval officers, I recognise the unique demands our nation asks of you. We think of all you have done to make the Commonwealth such an important force for good. You pledged to serve your whole life. That is why we are here. The wartime generation, my generation, is resilient and it is with humility and pleasure on behalf of the entire country, indeed the whole free world, that I say to you all, thank you. There is another tradition in this country which gives me confidence for the future. That is the tradition of service the willingness to honor one another and seek the common good transcends social change. My name is Stan Ford. In 1944, I was on board HMS Fratton, supporting the troops on D-Day. Our ship was torpedoed and sunk. By luck, my life was saved when I was pulled from the sea. Growing up, I was one of 10 children, and all eight of us boys joined the armed services. We all wanted to serve the monarch and we all did our bit for the country. I thank the Queen for her service, not just during the war. She was a linchpin for us all. I admired her, and I was proud to call her my Queen for all these years. Service and duty are not just the guiding principles of yesteryear. They have an enduring value which spans the generations. My name is John Nicholl, and I served in the Royal Air Force for 15 years as a tornado navigator. During the 1991 Gulf War, I was shot down with my pilot, captured and held as a prisoner of war in Baghdad for seven weeks. The concept of service was epitomized by our late queen. She had not asked for the role she was given, but when she was called to serve, she did not waver. She did not question what was required. She never said, I cannot do this. For me, the queen fulfilled her duty with great dignity and grace until her final days.
I'm Staff Sergeant Felicia Watkinson, and I've been in the Army for almost 20 years, serving in Belgium, Germany, and Belize. My work provides me with the opportunity to offer specialist support to my fellow soldiers, officers, and their families in a diverse and challenging environment. Growing up in Jamaica, the Queen was a powerful role model in a man's world and a symbol of great leadership in the coming world. As I serve the Queen, I will also proudly serve our King and country. I owe a particular debt of gratitude to the many members of the armed forces who have given me and my family their personal support in so many different ways 